Hi everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. This is the IC7100 from A to Z, number 14. When I started this series, the rig was mounted in my truck. It's been in and out a few times, but recently it's been in the shack for just a little too long. It's time to get it mounted back in the truck for some mobile operating this summer. Before I move it, I'd like to load up the memories with a bunch of useful frequencies for VHF and UHF repeaters, as well as some HF and receive-only frequencies. The memories in the 7100 are pretty easy to program and change. We've covered that in previous videos. Even though they're easy to program from the front panel, there are around 500 of them. If you're going to make use of even half of the memories in the radio, you really need to have a better way to manage them. In videos 12 and 13, we looked at connecting your radio to your PC with the USB port and how to set things up to use that for operating various digital modes and controlling the radio. Today, we're going to look at using that USB port connection to help manage all those memories and other settings in the radio. Let's get started. This is the RT Systems website. They're a pretty popular uh, site for programming software, and their software, I think, is probably one of the most popular ones out there. And as you can see, they do a ton of different radios. And, of course, among them is ICOM. And, of course, they tell you it's so easy, which it actually is. That's uh, probably pretty true advertising. So we're going to click on HF radios, and you can see they cover including some of the older um, model radios out there. And they cover the 7100. So you can buy just the software. You can buy the software and a cable that plugs into the remote jack on the radio. And you can separately just buy a USB cable if you don't already have one. So I actually just bought the software because I already had my radio connected. And I'll put uh, links to their website in the description for this. But anyway, just wanted to show you the website and, and where you go to get their software. They have Windows and Mac. They don't have uh, Linux versions of this. So let's get the software running and we'll see how this works. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to download the settings from the radio. So we're going to go to communications and we're going to say get data from radio. Now this pop-up that you get for this I think is probably a holdover for some of the programming software they make for other radios, the older ICOMs that don't have a USB port. Because it says plug, turn the radio off, plug the cable into the remote port, turn the radio on, and then click OK to receive data. Now there is a remote port on the IC7100, but I know that this works over the USB port as well. So as long as your radio is already connected, and mine's right over here and it's connected, you don't have to turn the radio off or plug any cables in or do anything. Uh, if I just click OK, the radio should go into clone mode and start transmitting data, and it has. So this will now download all of the memories and settings and everything that's in the radio into a file, uh, well, actually into a page on here, and we can save that as a file if we want. So, Okay, in reality, this has been going for about uh, a minute or so, so this does take a few seconds to get everything downloaded. So now, if you look at the bottom of the screen here, you will see that I have band A, or this is the A, B, C, D, E. They call them bands. I'm not sure why, but this is the memory groups, A, B, C, D, E. So in group A, here's what I had programmed in the radio. 
and you can see it goes all the way down to 99 and actually channel 99 is where I have my hotspot for D star so that's what's in there and I don't think I really have I got one 40 meter frequency in B I don't have a lot in the radio a couple of airband frequencies in band E these of course would be receive only because the radio won't let you transmit there and then you can also see the limit memory so these are for the band edge scanning so it shows you those and you can change all these DR this is digital repeater memory so this is the list of all of the D-Star repeaters and the radio has, I think it's 900. Let me just scroll to the bottom and we can look. Yeah, it's got room for 900 repeaters, uh, digital repeaters. And the list of D-Star repeaters, at least worldwide, is much larger than that now. So I'll show you how to edit this shortly. The call channel memories, we can see those. And then GPS memories and I'll be honest with you, I'm not even sure what the GPS memories are. I know you can put pre-programmed locations in, but I have not used GPS memories at all on this radio. So I need to do a little reading before I can talk about those. So let's go back to Band A. And then the other thing nice that the RT system software does is if you click up here on settings, you can go to the radio menu settings and this will now bring up all of the set functions so if you push the set button right here on the radio and you go into the different uh, setting functions those are all available here so this is everything that you'll find in all of the set menus. They've got common one, two, three. This is all the display settings, CW and RIDI settings, GPS settings, and then there's some little sub menus in here, um, depending on which one. So for example, user band edge. Now it, you'll notice none of this works. Um, and I got to find where it is on the screen here. There's the band edge beeps. I would think they would have it on this same page. Band edge beep. Here we go. On default. So it's to the default. So I can't do anything here. If I change the band edge beep to user, now I can go in and I can change all of the band edge beep settings. I'm going to just put this back to default for now. So anything you can do on the radio menus, you can do with this and then program that into the radio. And we'll show programming the radio here shortly. All right, so we've downloaded everything from the radio. Now, what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to save this file and I'm just going to call this IC7100 downloaded settings March 2021. So I've saved that and you probably noticed on the screen there I had a few other files. So I am going to open a file that I've already been working on and this is set up 2021 March. So I'm getting ready to put the radio back in my vehicle. And we're going to be doing hopefully some road trips this summer. So I wanted to get some things programmed in here. All right. So now in band A, here is what I have programmed. So I've got a lot more memories filled up here now. And I've, and I've got the name of the memory set to be the city. And this is a whole bunch of repeater lists. And I'll show you some neat things about this in a minute. But let's go back to the other um, uh, memory bands. 
So in band B, I also have a bunch of repeaters in here. And these are repeaters and frequencies that are uh, where my in-laws live in upstate New York. So these are cities in upstate New York. So I've got band B set up for that. You can set these bands up what, however makes sense for you. If you travel to multiple different areas, maybe you've got each band of memories set up for a different area that you go to. Um, maybe you do shortwave listening, and actually I've got a little bit of that in here. If I click on band D, I've programmed, uh, actually I've just programmed the WWV frequencies in here because it's kind of convenient to go check those for propagation and then uh, one shortwave station that I listen to WTWW I have their three transmitter frequencies in here um, and then in band C I have some HF net frequencies I've got uh, good SAM net and so I pre-programmed a bunch of this let's take a look at how we would set these up All right, first let's take a look at how we would add just a, a frequency manually. So let me go into band B here, which is my Binghamton one, and whoa, scrolled a little too far. And it just happens that the next blank channel I have is 5252, so let's put in 52 simplex in here. So we just type in 146.52 and you can tab over and by default it makes the transmit frequency the same and it makes it simplex and it picks filter one. Uh, data mode, I don't want data mode and the default is not to. And I'm just gonna call this uh, 5.2 simplex for the name. No tone and none of the other stuff. Now, one of the things you'll notice, there's a whole lot of extra columns over here on the right. And by the way, way over here on the right is a comment column. This doesn't actually get programmed into the radio, but you can use this for whatever if you want to, if you've got some notes about it. You know, this is my buddy Bob's repeater or whatever. That's just for your use over there. But then you'll notice that the data for columns that don't apply is grayed out. So, for example, I have no tone, so the CTSS tone is grayed out here. I, there, I can't put a tone frequency in if I don't have tone. And then there's a whole bunch of split tone stuff and digitally coded squelch. And we'll talk about that. Although, I will. So, split tone is if you have a. Uh, repeater where the receive tone that the repeater needs to bring it up is one tone and then it actually transmits a different tone back to you to open your squelch. I have never seen a repeater at least in the United States and I'm sure there's probably some out there but I have never encountered one any place I've been that had split tones where it used two different tones. So you're probably almost never going to use any of this stuff. Uh, but it's there if you need it. It allows you to program every feature of the radio or of the memories. So we've just added uh, 52 simplex and that's it. It's in there. Now, let's say that I have a frequency that I downloaded or one of the memory channels that was downloaded from the radio and I want to put that in my new setup and I actually do so here's a frequency uh, or a repeater in Hoyt Kansas which is kind of near Lawrence and I don't think I remembered to program this in that list that I've got in my new setup so I just want to copy this. I don't want to have to type this all over again. So you can either come up here, click the the little copy icon. You can click on edit and do copy. Or you can right click on it and do copy, which I'm going to do. 
or you can just do control C on the keyboard. So all the standard Windows copy and paste functions work. So I'm going to go to my new setup. And I really don't want to put this at the bottom here because I kind of have these sort of in order by distance from me. And I really want that to go right here. So one of the features they provide for you is I can scroll down and select all of these memory channels. And then I right click and I can say move down. And it now just moved everything down and made a space for me. And then I click on this empty row and I'm going to just do control V. And that put in the frequency that I copied from the downloaded data. And then let me save that. So the, the editing features in here, I'm not going to go through everything. This It's not my intent for this to be a tutorial on the RT system software, but they really do have the software set up very nicely so that you can uh, copy and paste things and move things around. Um, and then I'll sh I will show you one other feature that is really very nice that they have. Um, let's say I have, I, I really want to put some uh, repeaters for um, uh, let's say St. Louis, because I'm going to be going near St. Louis. Well, I don't happen to know any of those repeaters. If you go up here to File, you can click on External Data, and they have several different frequency, or sorry, several different references here. Now, a couple of these you need to subscribe to. Repeater Book is on here, and there's a Repeater Book Search. You don't need to subscribe to that, and so I'm going to put in here St. Louis, Missouri, and let's say I want anything that's within 60 miles from there, and I just want 2 meter and 70 centimeter, which I've already got checked, and I click OK. Well, it does that search, and it brings that up in a separate tab here, and so here's a repeater book search of all the repeaters that are within 60 miles of St. Louis. Now I'm going to, if I click on city here, it will sort them by that. So let's just go down and let's say I'm going to just take the ones that are actually in St. Louis proper. That's probably not necessarily the best thing to do. And then at the bottom here, oh, one other thing, selected, this is not very clear. It says selected radio bands. So when this does that search, I've got uh, Yezu System Fusion, P25, Mixed Mode, DMR. Uh, basically, it's all of those repeaters. So if you click this little down arrow, I'm going to go in here and uncheck DMR because I'm not going to do that with the 7100. And I'm not going to do P25 and I'm not going to do Yezu System Fusion. But I do want the D-Star ones and then it just has the bands also. So now it has reduced my list to only repeaters that are D-Star or that, that aren't specifically those other modes. So a lot of these, they say mixed mode. So they might be D-Star, I mean, DMR and FM or Yezu System Fusion and FM. So again, I'm going to take all the St. Louis ones and I'm just going to highlight these and I'm going to do control C to copy them. I'm going to go into my new setup file here and I'm going to leave a gap of a couple. We'll start at 75. So I'll click there and I'm going to just do control V and there we go. It's put them all in with all the appropriate tone settings and now the one thing that it doesn't do correctly with this so over here, digital code, digital squelch, your call sign, repeater one, repeater two, these are things you need to fill in for D-Star, and it doesn't fill those in for you automatically. So you need, and you need the call sign. So let's see here. St. Louis, red, 440. So I'm going to go back over here. 
And I know some of you are going to probably write, because I know I need to do stuff on D-Star, and I haven't. And I will do some episodes here on D-Star coming up soon. So it's K0MDG. So let me go back to the setup. And for the 441, so for your call sign for D-Star, if I just want it to be calling anybody... CQ, CQ, CQ. Your call sign in D-Star means, it doesn't mean you. When you're, when you're talking about your own radio, the call sign that's your call sign is my call sign. Your call sign would be the call sign of a person you are calling. And if you're not calling anybody in particular, you just set the call sign to CQ, CQ, CQ. And I've already forgotten what the call letter was. K0MDG. And because I'm going through a repeater, so the repeater one call sign is going to be K0MDG space B. And you're going to say, why is it B? Well, it's because it's a 70 centimeter repeater, and that's just the way D-Star works. And then repeater two call sign, if I want anything on that I transmit to that repeater to go out to the whole D-Star internet network, I need to put that call sign in again, K0MDG, because that's the repeater I'm going through, and I'm going to put space G for gateway, because I want that repeater to transmit anything I transmit out over the internet. And again, that's D-Star stuff. I'm not going to go into those specifics right now, but so we've just added a bunch of repeaters here in St. Louis, and uh, the software actually let me look it up from repeater book. So that's pretty cool. And it shows you, you see a little asterisk here. If you have an asterisk, it means this has changed since you last saved it. So I'm going to save this again to make sure that we have everything. All right. So radio still on. We've got everything set. So let's actually plan. Let's get this written out to the radio and we'll see how this works. So I'm going to go back to communications. And I'm going to say send data to radio. And then I get this same menu again to turn it off, plug the cable in and so forth. I'm not going to do any of that. And, oh, and by the way, the USB settings, you can change the speed that the radio cloning works. So the, the RT system software uses the radio cloning function. And there is a speed setting. If you just leave everything at the defaults, this works. I haven't changed any of those either in this software or on the radio. So I'm going to say OK. And now we'll see that the radio has gone into clone mode and it shows the data going from a computer or another radio into that radio. So we'll let this finish programming and we'll see what we see. Once again, we will be editing most of this out. Almost done. And now that it's gone to the radio, it says push power. So you need to turn the radio off to reset it and load and have it actually start using all the new data that's been loaded into it. So we're going to turn it off. All right. We have powered off the radio, as it told us to on the menu. So we're going to power it back on. And, of course, it brought us up to the default factory reset VFO frequency. So, let's go into memory mode. And there we go. And this is one of my local repeaters. Let me turn the volume down a little bit here. So, let's just look through. Now, I did have a few things in memory already, so... But uh, if we go through here, 
we should have a lot more because yeah so there's all the and the names you see the memory name shows up here that we programmed for the name so those are all pre-filled in for us and as I scroll through here there's my Kansas City we summit all the other towns and we are all the way up through I think we had like 70 some yep there we go and then we started the st louis ones at 75 so there they are so everything is programmed in now let's go take a look at bank b we'll go back down to the beginning here and this is my upstate new york repeaters in bank b and let's see, on this bank, I think we manually programmed in 52. There's 14652, 52 simplex. So all of that got programmed correctly. Let's just check bank C. And let's see, what did we have in bank C? I think that was, um, yeah, this was just some a couple of net frequencies that I programmed for HF. So I don't have very much in here, but you can... Do what you like there. And then, um, whoops, I'm on the call channels. Bank D, we had programmed some shortwave listening frequencies. So here's WWV, there's 5 megahertz, 10, not hearing, eh, barely hearing 15 in the background. WWV is a very nice uh, propagation check. And then a couple of shortwave listening stations, and that was all we had there. And then in memory E, we had programmed some VHF, UHF. So here's the weather channels, the VHF weather frequencies. And you'll notice there's dotted lines around the TX, so it actually will not let me transmit on these. So these are receive only frequencies. Saturday through Thursday. The um. probability for widespread hazardous weather is low. So there we go. So it looks like it's worked. We've programmed a whole bunch of memories and even though the memory programming on the 7300 is pretty simple, uh, there are over 500 memories with all the limits and band edges and everything else. So using a, a program and a spreadsheet format to do it is certainly a lot easier than trying to do it manually in the radio and then you can save different memory schemes for different occasions or places or whatever makes sense for you okay that's how to program your radio with software from rt systems I'm sorry that we didn't get to the D-Star and DR memory programming, but this is already way longer than I was hoping for, so we'll get to that in another episode. In case you were wondering, there are other software packages for programming the IC7100. ICOM offers their CS7100 cloning software. I haven't used it, so I can't really say if it's better or worse than the RT Systems offering. There's also an open source option called Chirp. Chirp supports programming many different radios. I have tried Chirp and it seems to work okay, but it only supports programming the standard bank A through E memory channels. It doesn't support any of the other memories and it doesn't support any of the radio settings. And the way that it presents each of the memory banks is a little bit confusing in the user interface. I'll have links to all of these options in the description. In addition to the other links, you'll find a link for a to z.tech. That's the companion website for this channel. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, I would appreciate a click on the like button. If you find the channel useful, please consider subscribing. You'll want to click on the bell icon to be notified when new videos come out. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.